Every American is born with inherent rights. That's what our founding documents say. And the purpose of the U.S. government is to protect those rights. That has been our national creed for hundreds of years, and it's worked. But the left no longer believes it. Progressives have decided that the Bill of Rights applies only to people who agree with them. Their views are protected by the First Amendment. Your views are hate speech. The Second Amendment covers their security detail. You can't be trusted to have a gun at home. Now the activist left is telling us that people who disagree with them no longer have freedom of movement or association. They can't go to the movies or go to restaurants. If they dare leave their homes, they will be surrounded by mobs and threatened. It's happening. Last Friday, White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders and her family were forced to leave a restaurant in Virginia because the owner didn't like their politics. Sanders and her husband went home, but the rest of their family went to another restaurant. That wasn't good enough. They had committed the sin of being related to someone who works at the White House. So progressives continued to harangue them as they tried to eat. This is happening in a lot of places to a lot of people. Protesters, for example, have massed outside the home of White House aide Stephen Miller. In case their intentions weren't clear enough, they put up mock wanted posters with Miller's face on them. A DHS employee, meanwhile, found a burned, decapitated animal carcass on his front porch. Again, the message is crystal clear. Activists on the left are moving toward violence. They are aware of this, and some applaud it. A piece yesterday in Splinter News, which is owned by Univision, explained that intimidating Trump supporters in public places is, quote, just the minimum baseline here. This is all going to get more extreme, and it should, end quote. How extreme? Well, the article fondly recalls the domestic terror bombings of the 1970s, thousands a year in America. That's our future, the article says. Unfortunately, we're headed there fast. Over the weekend in Los Angeles, Congressman Maxine Waters urged the mob to hunt down and find members of the president's cabinet. Here's part of it. If you think we're rallying now, you ain't seen nothing yet. cabinet uh, that are being booed out of restaurants, who have protesters taking up at their house, who sang no peace, no sleep, no peace, no sleep. Let's stay the course. Let's make sure we show up wherever we have to show up. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd, and you push back on them, and you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. The message of all this is clear. The left no longer considers its political opponents fellow citizens or even human. How long before they start openly calling for something bad to happen to those opponents? Well, in the case of Maxine Waters, it won't be the first time. In 1992, Waters cheered as racist mobs burned Los Angeles. As she put it at the time, riot is the voice of the unheard. When Reginald Denny was dragged from his truck and nearly murdered for the color of his skin, beaten in the head with a cinder block on camera, Waters championed his attackers. She partied with them after their trial. Maxine Waters has a record of endorsing mob violence. Everyone in Washington knows that. Democrats don't care. When you start to cast individuals as less than human, as people who are actually out to get you, That's right. there's really only one answer to how you react to that. The left wants to denormalize and dehumanize, to use your words, its political opposition. And they do that in a variety of ways. Uh, so, for example, when uh, Charles Murray wants to give a speech at Middlebury College, they have to have a riot. They don't have a debate in which they demolish his argument. They don't want to win the debate. They want to prevent the debate taking place. That's right. Uh, they want to label somebody a hater. If you happen to think that Obamacare is not the best public policy, it's because you want grannies and urchins to die. And once you do that, you're basically saying there's no form of civilized political discourse possible uh, with your opponent. And the logic of that is that instead you riot and you beat them up as they do at Middlebury. Uh, you poison them, as happened to Robert Spencer, who's well known to this network when he gave a speech in Iceland recently, uh, or you uh, open fire on them. And, and you make politics impossible if you do that. There's been maybe two instances in the history of the United States where this kind of activity has been replicated. And I would think that one of them might be the Reconstruction era, 
where you had a resistance in the South resisting the results of the Civil War and the reunification of the country. Right. And you had public officials exhorting private citizens to deprive other private citizens of their rights to public accommodations, to privileges and immunities uh, that are secured to all citizens and were secured by the Civil War. That has only happened once before in our history where public officials are actually exhorting private citizens. In that case, the private citizens they were exhorting were the Klan, who was the military ring at the time essentially of the Southern Democrats, to deprive blacks of their rights under the law and also deprive them of public accommodations. You might say that Jim Crow era, but you might have a singular governor of a southern state who might stand in a schoolhouse door, but they weren't actually exhorting private citizens that much to do so, although that did occur. But now we have this, and it's extraordinary because I think we're at this inflection point for a host of reasons, but the framers gave us a Republican system of governance to shield us against mob mob violence and the passions of the day but that depended really on two things and that is a informed electorate informed citizenry and responsible elected officials as to the former we have now a extremely biased media that doesn't really inform but proselytizes and harangues and acts as an organ for one particular side to get their viewpoint out. And our educational system hasn't been teaching effective history for 30 years now. And with respect to responsible elected officials, if you think back to you know the last 50 years or so, it's difficult to imagine, or go back throughout our history, it's difficult to imagine any of the founding fathers, a Madison, a Jefferson, a, a Lincoln, a Roosevelt, an Eisenhower, Reagan, doing the kind of uh, inflaming of the electorate the way we see some elected officials doing. But even aside from that, not inflaming it, but not even trying to tamp down the passions and the rhetoric that the founders understood were anathema to an effectively governed republic. Something interesting has happened. As progressives become more authoritarian and less tolerant, they seem more convinced that they're fighting actual Nazis rather than their fellow Americans with whom in the scheme of things they have only relatively mild political differences. The more they accuse the administration of extremism, the more extreme they become. And that's not surprising because once you decide that the people who disagree with you are Nazis, everything is allowed. Why wouldn't you threaten them in restaurants or burn their houses down or who knows? This could very well end in tragedy. You start talking like this and you don't know where it's going to go. Some progressives seem to welcome all that. Quentin James, who's the head of a political action committee that supports Democrats, recently announced that those calling for calm are, quote, accomplices of the current administration. Accomplices? This is the language of total war. It's scary. It has no place in politics. We're heading towards something awful. These cuts are blood money. People will die. Let's be very clear. Senate Republicans are paying for tax cuts for the wealthy with American lives. Okay, so you disagree with me on a piece of legislation, therefore you're a murderer. This is how things fall apart, when you no longer see political differences as legitimate, but instead as moral crimes. When you begin to believe your opponents are unworthy of life itself, when you start to make excuses for violence. That is all happening now. What do you think happens next? We know where it's going. This is predictable and predicted. Historically, wherever the left has been in power, and either it's to get power or if they've been, if someone tries to move them out of power, the movement is to uh, uh, do violence. It's a, it's a dynamic where they realize that uh, in order to have the, uh, the cultural dynamic continue, the only way to maintain power is to silence those who are against them or those who do not conform. And of course, that takes the form of violence. In the, in the 20th century, of course, just three countries. Soviet Union, Communist China, uh, and the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. Right. Estimates are up to about 70 million people killed simply in order to maintain power. So this is what we have to be aware of. While our system is genius and brilliant, it's the leftist ideology that is new. We've been looking at masked, uh, violent individuals trying to interrupt the inaugural uh, our, on our campuses, uh, the Occupy movement, the Black Lives Matter movement. It's, it's changed from trying to engage everyone as a whole to 
the suggestion that this disruption is appropriate, that violence, arson uh, is the way to go. And even then, not only were there not condemnations of it, uh, but the left funded it uh, and uh, held it effectively to some degree as heroism. And that also, for, for Americans and everyone around the world, we're now awash in violence because of terrorism. We see it all over the world. It inures people to that's it, right. and that's another dynamic that's affecting our young people here, that, oh, this is normal. Well, someone's got to start saying think, that it's not. 